Hello, it's Nikki and welcome to the podcast. I'm so glad so many of you are loving the interviews and thank you so much for sharing, rating and reviewing. I so appreciate it. Anyway, I wanted to continue the conversation of success. So often we hear the extremes, don't we, of rags to riches, homeless to billionaire, sleeping on a random sofa to a blinged up palace. But what about the in-between bits? I know personally, I have had many. How do you get from A to Z? But also, how do you get from A to B or F to M? In these mini episodes, I want to provide questions to ponder, ideas that might spark a brainstorm, or raise topics that might be a little bit uncomfortable in the moment, but they will support you to go to the next level of your business. As always, please come over to social media at Nikki Raby, and I'd love to hear your thoughts and breakthroughs. Okay, today I want to talk about membership sites and online courses. I get so many messages every day practically about how I build online courses and membership sites and I just wanted to share a few things because basically I have spent a lot of time in the dark figuring it out, not really knowing where I was going or how to get started and I've invested a lot of time, effort, money into doing this and I just just kind of wish I'd known. I'd wish I'd known what to focus on and how to actually get results. So a little backstory, I wanted to shake up the way that I worked. I knew that I could do one-on-one stuff and at the point of sharing this, I probably coached over a thousand people. But because currently I only have two days of childcare a week, I wanted to shake up the way that I work so I wasn't just limited to -to one-to-one stuff. Also as well, so many people listen to this podcast internationally, all over the world, in so many countries I've never even been to. So hello if you're listening from a country I've never been to. But um, I wanted to really grow my business, scale my business and also provide value. Not everybody needs you one-on-one and this was something that really helped me to try and get my head around this. Because when I was growing up, I always say it on the podcast, entrepreneurship, making it happen, doing what you love, none of these kind of buzz terms were around at that period of time. So there's been a lot of work in progress, let's just say. I'm actually going to be doing a full on workshop on this in a couple of weeks. So feel free to go to nikkiraby.com forward slash online events. It's in November. There's four events that I'm doing online in November. So if you want one of those tickets, please let me know. They are limited because you do get additional support one on one with me. So go and check them out and have a look. Okay, so I've broken it down into 10 points today just to give you loads of value and things to get started with. So at this point, feel free to grab a piece of paper and a pen. You may want to take notes. And also just to say, I am not perfect at this. I haven't got it all sorted out. It has very much been a work in progress, but I want to share what I've learned so far. So number one, I'm sure you know this already, but technology is really amazing. And maybe when you saw the title of this podcast, you were thinking to yourself, well, this is not going to be for me. I could never do that. Or I'm just not very good. I'm not a techie person or I can't imagine what I would use that for in my business. But the thing is, technology is changing and shaping and moving and shaking so quickly that it's really amazing what you can do. So I would just say at this stage is that don't rule anything out. There could be loads of different opportunities that maybe you don't even know exist yet. So I would definitely just keep an open mind and believe me when I say technology is amazing. Number two. So let's talk about time first and foremost and why it can be complicated. So often I hear people saying, oh, that's something that I will do in five years time or I'm going to need at least a year to be able to bring that to life. However, 
it isn't that difficult and I want you to believe me when I say this and yes of course there's been a lot of sweary evenings with a bottle of wine trying to figure it out and then running into the living room to Matty and go oh my goodness I did it I think it's live I think it's working I think I've sorted the link there's been a lot of toing and froing but what I really want to share with you is not to make it more complicated than you maybe think it is. We can all put all of these barriers in place. I haven't got enough time, I haven't got enough money, I haven't got the skills yet, that's something for later. So I want you to catch yourself, even when you're listening to this, and think, could I actually start to move forward on this? Could I take the first step? Could I make some notes around this? Could I even buy a notebook that is a place where I start to put my ideas? Then on the flip side of things, sometimes people do just say it's so easy and overnight they were making 200 grand and they were doing this, this and this. It isn't that easy if you want to have good quality and you want to put a bit of time and effort in it. So people who are saying they're writing a book in a weekend, that is maybe not the kind of style that you want to go for. But for sure, you can get clear on the ideas, but to be able to rattle out 80,000 words in a weekend might be tricky. Likewise with an online course, in order to bring all of the components together, the marketing plan, the sales page, the actual content itself, how it's going to link to your um, bank, how you're going to get paid, it does take a bit of time and a bit of logistics as well, but it is completely, completely doable. And I want you to know that I am no different from you. I don't have any more specialist skills in terms of technology. I don't have a kind of IT degree or anything like that. So I just want you to, again, be really open to these possibilities. Number three is all about starting with what you know. And I'm sure there will be some limiting beliefs that pop up. Often it is the way where already you start to talk yourself out of it and go, well, I'm not an expert or, well, I haven't been doing it that long or maybe I don't know enough, maybe I'll wait, all of that sort of stuff. I think this notion of becoming an expert in our field can be a bit scary and we might get that feeling that people will shout us down and we'll get found out, imposter syndrome, all of that kind of stuff. But I want you to hear the fact that you do know lots and lots of things already. And this is what I always say to my clients is start with what you know. It's really important for getting results, but also building that momentum and having that sense that actually things are happening. So the first course that I built was a success toolkit for actors. I'd written a book in 2014. And one thing that I was hearing from those actors who had read that book was they were looking for something a little bit more interactive. They were looking for a bit more of a step-by-step -step guide, maybe hearing it in my voice and having those exercises being available and me being able to take them through it. So I heard that, I listened to what my audience was saying, my audience, it sounds so glamorous, but when I would get those emails through, I'd really take note of them and really listen to what points were being shared. So I guess what I want to do is to invite you to do the same. Think about what you know about right now. What comes to you really easy? What are people always asking you for? And I think sometimes the temptation can be to say, I mean, I'm never going to do a course. Well, not now, actually. I'm going to take the never out right now. But I'm not going to say how to become a millionaire in 48 hours because I haven't become a millionaire in 48 hours. So it's really important as well well for your integrity and your authenticity that you stick with what you know and the more kind of results that you've got maybe it's sharing how you do something a step-by-step -step guide it's really going to help your audience to connect with you and then go on to buy from you Okay, point number four is all about the big vision. So what are you going to gain from creating a course or a membership site? What is your underlying reason and your why for following this through? 
The reason that I ask this is that I'm sure along the way there will be many times where you just want to give up or you're not getting results quick enough or maybe you put your course out there and you don't quite get the response that you want. You have to know ultimately where it is that you're going to get to. And thinking about those anchors that are really going to keep you fresh and sharp and excited about what it is that you're building. So for me, I just kept thinking, I mean, I've got a bigger reason and a purpose and all the rest of it. This is just kind of the fluffy stuff as well. I started to really connect with that sense of earning money when I wasn't in the room, having that first payment come into my bank account and having that moment of, whoa, I've just been paid. I haven't had to have that interaction with somebody. I've created something that somebody wants to buy and is excited about getting started on. So I really went deep into that visualization of really connecting with that and being excited about it. Point number five, there's probably going to be a bit of trial and error along the way. And I kind of approach it from this sort of point of view, because Although the temptation is to make everything perfect, everything beautiful, everything amazing, high quality, professional, yes, of course, you want all of those things. But I don't believe anybody who has put something out there has ever put something out there when it's 100, 100%. It could be like 93% perfect, but one thing that I've realized along the way is when I'm trying to get things perfect, when I'm fiddling with things, I did this when I was pregnant, I was making every piece of fun, I was, I don't know what I was doing to be honest, but I was stuck in that procrastination perfection mindset. And what it was doing was actually keeping me small. It was actually stopping me from launching because I was telling myself that I wasn't ready. And that's not to say that you throw any old thing out there, But I think you have to allow yourself that permission that it's not going to be the finished article, even though people pay for it. And I guess the people who originally bought my courses back in the day, they've really benefited from that because as I've grown and I've upgraded and added new content and tweaks and all the rest of it, they've been able to have that access as well. So that's been really lovely. But I want you to check that you're not stuck in that, like, well, it's got to be perfect or I can never, ever do anything with it. And allow yourself some wiggle room. Not everything that you create is going to be perfect first time. Also as well, sometimes things don't go the way that you expect. For example, in 2016, I created a course. I was so thrilled with it. I was so excited about it. I I tapped into what it was all about. I couldn't wait to share. And guess what? Nobody, like nobody has ever bought this course. And of course, it can be tempting to sort of think, oh my goodness, I'm terrible. I need to leave. I need to just stop like being an entrepreneur. But you know what? I grew so much in creating that course. This is obviously hindsight and I can see the lesson in it now. But I grew so much and I was able to take lots of that content and repackage it in a different kind of way and add it to subsequent courses. So I don't want you to get caught up in, I guess, the drama of things. It can be really easy to let our heads sort of spiral into all kinds of different places. So just stay in the game. That's all you need to do, really. Number six, I know this is really obvious, but make sure that you have an audience to sell to. It's really important that you spend lots of time trying to build your audience. Now, I'm not some kind of Instagram guru and I don't have a mailing list of millions and millions of people, but I do have an engaged community of people who know, like and trust me. And as a little aside to that, make sure that you're sharing your testimonials and how you've helped people in the past. Because that sense of drip feeding, I'm really good at what I do and I can help you too, will really work towards somebody actually coming and parting with their money and paying it to you. 
So in whatever way that you can, really make this a focus. And sometimes as well, those limiting beliefs might come up like, well, I'm not doing this to be popular or I don't want people to think that I'm chasing the numbers and it's not about the numbers, it's about the engagement, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But make sure that you're doing activities that are really starting to build your audience, that your audience is going to connect with. Because when it comes to that point of you pressing go or pressing live or publish, you've got a ready-made audience already and waiting to pay for things. So point number seven is this little sort of cycle that I've noticed, which is research, deep breaths, check your intention and then implement. So one stage I always start with is researching. So really thinking about what my audience want, what kind of areas I could talk about, what sort of topics would fit into this course, what would it look like, what's the customer journey, really going into detail in that brainstorming mode. Then often I need to take a deep breath, which is stage two, because at that point I can get so overwhelmed thinking, oh my goodness, I've got all these things, I need to share them all, and suddenly it becomes like a 56 module course and it gets so crazy. So I think in that deep breath stage, you really need to hone down on what it is. Often we think more is more, but actually in terms of a course, less is more. So always feel free that you can pull back in that way. Take a deep breath, see what feels really good. That's gonna come across when you're selling things, when you're putting yourself out there. If you feel really good about what you've created and you feel good about putting it out into the world, you're going to get that feedback. You're gonna get that loop around where people are gonna be driven to your site and excited about that. So make sure that you're taking lots of deep breaths and having that reflection throughout the process. Next. Think about your intention. What is the end result that you want your customer or your client to gain? Sometimes we don't know the answer to that. So feel free to put yourself out there to engage with your ideal customer, to ask questions, to build surveys, to listen to what's going on and really know what your intention and your USP is. So what are you, what flavor are you bringing to the table in this? Because otherwise you can find yourself just regurgitating the same old stuff that everybody else is doing. And it's really important to hook in and connect with where you're coming from. And stage four of that is about implementation. So it's about building a plan. What I tend to do is reverse engineer the process. So I think about when I want to launch, as in all the content goes live. I think about when I want to start marketing it. I then think about, okay, so when do I need to have the content from? When do I need people to help me? When do I need to bring people in? And what does that whole picture look like? Then I write a master to-do list. And sometimes it can literally be like, 581 things that I need to do. And of course you can put subcategories on that so it's not completely overwhelming. But really understanding what that picture is has been so helpful. It's really great for momentum and progress and feeling like you're actually doing it. And then what you can do is when you're in that flow of actually doing it, you can tell people, you can already start to say, oh, I'm building this course. I think you might be interested in it. Here's the link. You can join my waiting list, et cetera, et cetera. Number eight, keep things simple. I have such a tendency as a former pleaser to over deliver. Like I wanna give you the PDF, I wanna give you the audio version, I wanna give you the video version, I wanna do this, this and this, and I wanna add this additional thing. For me, it's always about being really clear and stripping back because definitely more is not more. It is about making things easier for somebody. Somebody might be buying your course who is so short on time and what they're actually paying for is that result. They need to know what you have to offer in however long it's going to take. It's kind of like that moment of rather than just looking at all the bookshelves on the shelf, you're not feeling excited about that. You just want the one that is going to help you and give you those takeaway nuggets. So really connect with that and 
catch yourself if you're overcomplicating things. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has this tendency. So really make sure you're keeping things simple at all times. Point number nine, love your customers. This goes without saying, it's not all about just taking the money and running, but making sure you're really connecting with your customers, listening to what they say, obviously set boundaries alongside this. I'm not just saying that you need to be open at all times, but really take care of your clients. So many people um, who have come into my business in my life, maybe they started by getting a free video series and then they bought my book and then they bought a short course and then they came to an event and then suddenly it got to the point where they bought one of my larger courses and then finally upgraded to a one-to-one session or something like that. So the customer journey can sometimes be quite progressive. Once somebody connects with you and they like you, then it may be that they come back time and time again. So one thing that I would say is make sure that you're nurturing your existing customer base rather than just always looking for new clients and customers. I had a call actually from a big phone company who will remain nameless recently and the woman on the phone was asking how she could provide value and give discounts to the other people in my house. My iPhone has been on the blink a little bit and I need a new battery and when she was saying you know that stock thing of is there anything else I can help you with today I said yeah I would love a new battery if that's a possibility. Now, I wasn't being flippant or tight in this conversation, but the phone company that she was from, I've actually been with for 15 years. So I had a huge loyalty to them. I've given them a lot of money over time. But what she did immediately was to revert back to the new customers, how she could offer them if they ever wanted to buy an iPad or whatever. So really make sure that you are being kind and considerate and lovely to people who are already in your program, already in your world. And I think this goes against um, discounts as well. Really make sure that you're not undercutting people or that sense of, yeah, buy now, it's a thousand pounds and tomorrow it's 800. You know, have a strategy that really reflects your integrity and your loyalty. It will serve you well, my friends. So I've got another little cycle to finish with, which is evaluate, learn, forgive, elevate. So when you've launched, when you come to the close, you know, if you're sort of closing at a certain point, really look at it and really assess what went on, what worked well, who your customer was, what maybe were the best ways of marketing something, really connect and give yourself that time of evaluating, really go into detail as well. Don't just get emotional about it and say, well, that was awful, or actually that was really great. See if you can back it up with data and evidence and actual facts about what went on. Number two, learn. Be open to learning and moving forward in a way that feels really good. The first time that I ran my personal business brand booster, I was using some different technology. And there were elements within that that I just thought, oh no, it's time to upgrade. This isn't as reliable as I want it to be. I need to do X, Y, and Z. And I learned a lot of things. And this links nicely to the third stage, which is about forgiving. So sometimes if you get a negative comment or if somebody didn't get the link that they should have done or somebody's having problems logging in, you can, if you're not aware of it, take it really personally and it can lead you down quite a bad spiral of, oh my goodness, everybody hates the course or I don't know how to move forward or maybe I should just give up this whole thing. Basically, this is all part of the process. And although I haven't had it in a business course where somebody has asked for a refund, I know so many entrepreneurial friends um, who have had that case, who have uh, had refunds or people requesting not to work with them anymore. And so many people say, actually, it's just part of business. How many times have you bought an outfit and then you get it home and you put the dress on and you're like, oh my goodness, why did I ever think this was going to look good and it needs to go back? 
So one thing I would say is try not to take it too personally, even though it's a personal thing, even though you put your heart and soul and hard work and time and money and energy and all that good stuff into it. Make sure that you move very quickly between that learn, forgive or forgive and learn, forgive and learn, learn and forgive. And finally, as that point ends, think about how you can elevate it next time. So we're always looking to bring out the same thing. Now, again, what you might have is this temptation to go, right, okay, that's closed, that's done, what can I create next? And definitely I'm open to having all kinds of new and upcoming things and keeping things fresh and exciting, but you really don't have to reinvent the wheel. Can you imagine all the people who actually didn't see your course or your program and they really needed it? There are new people coming into your world all the time. I know when I see that on Instagram, when I've suddenly started following somebody and they'll occasionally do this, oh, I just wanted to do an introduction of new followers, or equally, I've been following them for a while and then suddenly they mention something and I think, oh, I never knew that about them. I never knew that that's what they did. But that was old information that was maybe shared a year or two ago. So I want you to think practically about how you would elevate it next time and to always give yourself that benchmark of pushing forward, being excited and thinking about how you can serve your customers more. Anyway, I hope all of those 10 points have been useful. And if you do want to find out more, feel free to go to the online events section of my website, nikkiraby.com forward slash online events. And that membership online course training is coming up in November. I'm going to be going into a lot more detail of packages, pricing, technology that I've used, big mistakes, how I've marketed it, how I've managed my boundaries, how I've been a leader in that big group of people and not gone mad in the process I've got so much to share in that so if you do want to join us there are limited seats please grab one nikkiraby.com forward slash online events and also what you can do is send in your questions in advance for that so I will be able to share some personalized feedback and also for a week afterwards you get access to me so you do have that accountability quality I've mentioned it a lot before that sense sometimes you buy the book or you go on the course or you go to the event and you leave all fired up and good to go and like yeah I'm gonna do it and then you completely forget about it and it's just another thing that's shelved so I really want to help you to maintain that momentum and be excited about it and actually make it happen if you want to come and join the conversation please come over to instagram at nikki raby and I'll see you very soon thanks for listening Thank you so much for listening as always. If you do want to rate and review and subscribe over on iTunes or even share it with a friend, I would love it. Thank you so much for your support. If you want to find out more about me and how we can work together, please go to NikkiRaby.com or connect with me across social media at NikkiRaby. I'll see you soon. Bye.